Discovering New Planets by Dr. May Jemison and Dana Machen Rowe. Find the truth. Everything you are about to read is true except for one of the sentences on this page. Which one is true? Our sun is the only star that scientists know for certain has planets, or it is possible to take photographs of planets located outside of our solar system. Find the answers in this book. Table of Contents Chapter 1, Balls of Rockets and Gas, How Do Planets Form? Chapter 2, Searching for Planets, How Were the Known Planets Discovered? Chapter 3, Planets Outside Our Solar System, How Do Scientists Look for Exoplanets? Hubble's Planet Picture, How Did the Hubble Space Telescope Take the First Photograph of an Exoplanet? Chapter 4, A Closer Look, What Have NASA Telescope Found Around Other Stars? And Chapter 5, Planets Like Earth, Could There Be Life on Exoplanets? Balls of Rock and Gas The universe includes everything we can see in the night sky. It includes the space between objects and even objects that are too far away to see. There are huge groups of stars called galaxies. Our universe has billions of these galaxies. Each galaxy contains billions of stars. Our sun is a single star in one galaxy. We call the sun, together with the planets and other objects orbiting it, our solar system. Without a telescope, galaxies look like stars when viewed from Earth. Different kinds of planets. The eight planets in our solar systems are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The planets that orbit closest to the sun are small and rocky. The outer planets are much larger and made of gas. How did such different types of planet form around one central star? Birth of the universe. Scientists believe that all of the matter and energy in the universe was once packed into an extremely small and hot particle. More than 13 billion years ago, the particle started to expand quickly. It pushed its energy and matter out to become the universe. This event is sometimes called the Big Bang. As the very hot matter cooled, it gathered into huge clouds of gases. These clouds are called nebula. Stars were created in the nebula. Creating the solar system. Clouds of dust and gas came together within a nebula. Gravity pulled more matter to the center of the cloud. The cloud spun. The center grew hot and started to use the gases as fuel. Scientists think this is how stars form, including our sun. Stars across the universe were created and are still being created this way. Extra matter spinning around the cloud form into a flat disk shape. Some of the matter in the spinning disk clumped together and some of these clumps joined together too. These larger clumps of matter are called planetismals. Planetismals are the early forms of the planets. Forming the planets. The sun sucked in most of the gases near the center of the disk. As a result, the planets that form closest to the sun are mostly made of rock and not as much gas. The planets that form farther from the sun are made of the gas that was still in the disk. As the planets spun around the sun, some crashed into each other. They picked up more matter. The leftover materials became moons, asteroids, and comets. Naming the planets. Ancient cultures all had different names for the planets. For example, Mars was called Hidu Dishit in Egyptian, Mangala in Sanskrit, and Huoxing in Chinese. The names we use in the English language today are names of gods in Greek and Roman mythology. Mercury means Roman god of travel. Venus, Roman goddess of love and beauty. Mars, Roman god of war. Jupiter, highest of the Roman gods. Saturn, Roman god of farming. Uranus, Greek god of the sky. Neptune, Roman god of the sea. Earth is not named for a god. Earth means land or ground. Searching for planets. The word planet means to wander in ancient Greek. Ancient astronomers noticed that some stars in the night sky seemed to wander among the other stars. The planets we called Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn were known by ancient astronomers around the world. Jupiter and Saturn are very far away. Because they are so large, however, they can still be seen without a telescope. Venus is called the evening star, appearing as the sun sets and shining the brightest in the sky. 
Uranus, and Neptune. In the early 1600s, astronomers started using telescopes. They learned even more about the known planets. Uranus could be seen without a telescope, but scientists didn't realize it was a planet at first. In 1781, William Herschel saw it through his telescope. At first, he thought it was a comet, but because it was moving slowly, he realized it was a planet. Scientists found Neptune while studying Uranus. Uranus' orbit was unusual. Scientists noticed that the gravity of another object seemed to be pulling on the orbit. Many scientists tried to pinpoint the orbit of this unknown object. From their data, Johann Gottfried Gell was able to spot Neptune from his observatory in Germany in 1846. Pluto. Pluto was not discovered until 1930. Clyde W. Tombo at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona spotted it that year. Scientists were studying the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. Both planets' orbits seemed to be affected by another object. The scientists realized that there must be another planet beyond Uranus and Neptune. That planet, now called a dwarf planet, was Pluto. Space probes. Since these discoveries, we have studied our own planets from powerful Earth-based telescope. The National Aeronautic and Space Administration, also known as NASA, has sent telescopes into space. They have also launched space probes. Some probes fly by planets and their moons to take pictures and collect data. Other orbit a planet to study it over a longer period. Some probes land on the planet to study the atmosphere and surface. Planets outside our solar system. We know a lot about our solar system, but our sun is just one star. There are billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Scientists think it is likely that many of these stars have their own planets. These planets are called exoplanets. It's not easy to find exoplanets. They do not give off light like stars do. They are also too far away for us to see well, even with large telescopes. There are billions of stars in a galaxy and billions of galaxies in the universe. Finding exoplanets. Think of a breeze. You can't actually see it, but you can see a kite using the breeze to fly. You observe the breeze indirectly. Just like the discovery of Neptune and Pluto, scientists discovered exoplanets indirectly. They observed the behavior of stars that they think may have planets. From a star's behavior, scientists can figure out whether or not it has a planet orbiting around it. They do this using several methods. Radio velocity. Radio velocity is one method scientists use to study exoplanets. They look for stars that seem to wobble. This tells scientists that the star might have a planet orbiting it. A star's gravity pulls on the planet orbiting it. As very large planets orbit a star, the planet's gravity actually causes the star to follow a small orbit too. Scientists study systems like this by looking at the star's light. The light appears to be white, but it actually is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. As the star wobbles, it moves farther from and closer to an observer. Its light changes. The star gives off more blue light when it's moving closer and more red light when it's moving away. The larger the planet, the more its gravity makes the star wobble. Astrometry. Scientists also use astrometry to find exoplanets. They look for a wobbling star. Then they measure the star's position against the fixed stars around it. By mapping the star's position over time, scientists can see how much the star has moved. This tells them if it is likely that the star has a planet orbiting it. Transit method. Scientists can study a planet as it transits across a star. This happens when an orbiting planet passes between the star and Earth. Scientists measure how much light the star gives off. When the planet passes across it, the planet blocks some of the light. The star becomes dimmer. The bigger the planet, the more light it will block. Direct images. Scientists are working on ways to look at exoplanets directly, but it is hard to take pictures of exoplanets. The stars are too bright, and the planets don't give off light of their own. Scientists have developed methods to block a star's light, like a giant shade. They have also developed special telescopes that can work together to reduce the light. Scientists can look at other types of light that planets give off too, such as infrared light. Hubble's Planet Picture Scientists find most planets by studying them indirectly, but the Hubble Space Telescope, HST, was the first telescope to photograph an exoplanet in visible light. Astronomers suspect that the star Fulmahalt might have had a planet orbiting it. A ring of gas and dust surrounded it. Astronomers pointed HST to look into this ring. 
Between 2004 and 2006, the scientists study images from HST noticed a spot in the ring, the small box below. The spot moved in a path that looked like an orbit. The movement of this spot is shown in the large inset below. Hubble had taken the first photograph of an exoplanet orbiting a star outside our solar system. A closer look. Earth-based telescopes gather data to help scientists find exoplanets, but Earth atmosphere distorts the view. Space-based telescopes orbit above Earth atmosphere. These telescopes can capture clear data and images, but stars are very far away. Any changes in their movement or light are very small when observed with telescopes on Earth or in orbit. The equipment we use to find exoplanets must have very precise measurements. Measurements from telescopes may be less than one thousandth of an inch or a centimeter. Hubble Space Telescope. In 1990, NASA launched the Hubble Space Telescope, HST, has taken some amazing photographs of space. It has taught us about galaxies, the life of stars, and the history of our universe. In the search for exoplanets, it has closely studied the gas and dust disk around stars. In 1992, HST found the first exoplanets orbiting a pulsar. Since then, many more exoplanets have been found. Spitzer Space Telescope. The Spitzer Space Telescope, launched in 2003, measures infrared light. In July 2012, Spitzer recorded the changes in infrared light coming from a star. Scientists believe Spitzer may have found a planet smaller than Earth, called UCF 1.01. It is a rocky planet that orbits very close to its star. Scientists think its surface temperature could be more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 538 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than Mercury, the closest planet to our sun. Kepler Space Telescope. In 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope was launched into Earth orbit. NASA uses Kepler to look for Earth-sized planets. These planets might be as small as half the size of Earth or twice as big. Kepler is set up to observe the star-filled region of the sky around the constellation Cygnus and Lyra. Kepler can look at lots of stars at once. It is currently looking at more than 100,000 stars. The telescope uses the transit method to look for exoplanets. It measures the changes in the brightness of stars, the amount of stars light dims tells scientists the size of the planet and its orbit. In June 2012, Kepler discovered a star called Kepler 36 with two planets orbiting it. One planet is a rocky planet about 1.5 times the size of Earth. The other planet nearby is almost four times the size of Earth and is made of gas. This was something scientists didn't expect. How could a solar system form with a rocky planet and a gas planet orbiting so close to each other? Sometimes discoveries bring up even more questions. Candidate or confirmed? Scientists have found thousands of possibilities for exoplanets. Of these, 2,321 are planet candidates. If scientists think that what they're seeing may be a planet based on data collected by their telescope, they'll call it a candidate. A planet is confirmed when scientists are able to observe using two or more different methods. As of 2012, astronomers have confirmed the existence of 729 exoplanets. Planets like Earth. People have always wondered about life on other planets. People write science fiction stories, make movies, and play video games about alien worlds beyond our own. Scientists are curious too. Earth is just the right distance from the sun to support life. The sun's light and heat give us what we need to live. Scientists wonder if similar conditions exist on exoplanets elsewhere in the universe. Stars seem to twinkle when observed from Earth because our atmosphere distorts their light. Looking for life. Most methods that scientists use to find exoplanets are good at finding large, Jupiter-sized gas giant planets, but these are unlikely to support life. So scientists are focused on finding more Earth-sized planets that may be more like our home. Bernard Starr was discovered back in 1916. In January 2012, using data from a space telescope, scientists made an exciting discovery. They found three planets around Bernard Star even smaller than Earth. Scientists tried to learn if an exoplanet has the right materials for life to exist. The planet would need certain chemicals such as water, carbon, and oxygen. All life on Earth needs liquid water. So the planet would also need to be the right distance from its stars in an area called the habitable zone. If it were too close to the star, the water would turn to gas. 
If the planet were too far away, the water would freeze. Exoplanet Timeline. In 1584, Giordano Bruno, a Catholic monk, is punished for suggesting other solar systems were likely to exist. 1698, astronomer Christian Hugen writes a book about what life would be like on other planets. 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope is launched from a space shuttle. 1992, two rocky planets are found orbiting a pulsar. 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope is launched. A habitable planet needs an atmosphere. An atmosphere keeps water from evaporating into space. It also protects the planets from stars' harmful rays. The atmosphere provides living things with necessary gases such as oxygen for animals and carbon dioxide for plants. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligent, SETI, Institute researchers believe that as beings and other planets advance, they develop radio signals just like humans did. These signals don't just travel to your home, they go everywhere, including into space. Scientists at SETI listen to the skies with large radio telescopes. They believe intelligent beings might use radio signals to communicate with us. SETI scientists also study life on Earth. They study extreme areas such as places with a very hot temperature or without water to see how living things might survive in different conditions. Scientists know there are other solar systems besides our own. They learn more every day about these faraway stars and planets. True statistics. Age of our solar system, 4.6 billion years. Planets known by ancient cultures, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Methods to study exoplanets, radio velocity, astrometry, transit method, and direct images. Space telescope observing exoplanets, Hubble, Spitzer, and Kepler. Number of stars Kepler is observing as of 2012, more than 100,000. Number of exoplanet candidates, 2,321. Number of confirmed exoplanets, 729. Did you find the truth? False. Our sun is the only star that scientists know for certain has planets. True. It is possible to take photographs of planets located outside of our solar system.